Okay, time for the last chapter of the candidate guide. So just a quick review of how you of what you should do at the end of all the procedures. Make sure all the paperwork has everything all the signatures you need. Make sure the floor examiners have initialed everything on the worksheets. You will see it's pretty straightforward. If any signature is missing at all, you must notify floor examiner immediately. Be sure to give your patient the follow-up care agreement form and keep one of them. Uh, you will get a candidate packet in which you're going to put your operative worksheet with radiographs, your perio treatment worksheet, there's a dental assistant verification form, the white copies of the follow-up care agreement, and any pink copies you get. Do not seal this packet, just give it to the check-in desk. You will be emailed a REB survey for you to take, and then your results will be posted online. Do not call for results, they will not answer you. So just a quick review of frequently asked questions from REB. The first one is, can I have a foreign dental assistant? The answer is no. No one, no foreign dental assistants, no dental assistants that can place uh, restorations. So you pretty much can either use one of a regular RDA or one of the dental students that are not in their final year of dental school. What's the minimum age to be a patient? 18 or over for perio, any age for operative. Timetable, you and your assistants are allowed into the building at seven. Patients can be sent to the grading area starting at 7.45. 8 a.m. is when the exam begins, so that's when the grading line will actually move. If you have endo on Saturday morning, you can't submit a patient until 10 a.m. Day 3, you have to have your patient out by 11. Day 1 and 2, you have to have your patient in line by 4 p.m. So, in line by 11 a.m. on Monday, in line by 4 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. Can you bring translators? Yes, they're allowed on the clinic floor and they may be allowed in the grading area per, it depends on uh, patient to patient uh, basis. What are floor examiners? These are people that you can actually talk to who are running the exam. They'll answer questions for you, they can clarify things for you, they, can, they work as liaisons between you and the grading examiners, they have all the forms that you need, they'll sign your med forms, they'll distribute forms, from the examiners, like pink slips. They can check on modifications, manage pulp exposures, and they'll check in initial steps all along the process of the exam. Can I anesthetize before acceptance? Yes, for perio, you should anesthetize the quadrant that you're gonna work on before approval. Operative, you can only after check-in with floor examiner. It's at your discretion to anesthetize prior to acceptance after check-in. Can you submit two operative radiographic lesions simultaneous? Yes, as long as it's the same patient, it's not adjacent teeth, and it won't uh, cause a loss of occlusal contact. If two operative operatives are approved, do you have to do both the same day? No. Do I have to use a rubber dam for operative? Interestingly, no. The only time you need a rubber dam is when you send the patient in for grading, for the preparation only, and when you request for modifications. Otherwise, it's up to your discretion to do whatever you want. When do I ask for modifications? Once you hit ideal. So if you hit ideal and there's any more caries, affected dentin, unsound demineralized enamel, or remaining restorative material, you're allowed to ask for extensions for those four items only. Everything else you don't touch. How do I write modification requests? So you write the type, the location, extent, and reason. Most important is the four reasons, caries, affected dentin, unsound demineralized enamel, and remaining restorative material. Modifications can be uh, requested in 0.5 millimeter increments. What are, when are original radiographs necessary? For operative, you need original radiographs from within six months that show the current condition of the teeth. So if there's any new fillings, you have to have new x-rays. Perio, FMX within three years, it can be original or duplicates, doesn't matter. So REPS is a firm policy that they believe all ex pulp exposures are avoidable. So what do you do if you have an exposure or near an exposure? The ideal situation, which you will not lose points for on the exam, to leave 0.5 millimeters of caries. You leave 0.5 millimeters of caries and you will get still a perfect score. And write in the notes to the examiners, I left 0.5 millimeters of caries, I will place an indirect pulp cap. If you do get an exposure, notify the floor examiners. They will tell you to place a pulp cap, and you will write a note to the examiners. You, there is point deductions for this. Please look back to the operative section for that. 
Canada system dismiss a patient while I'm doing endo? The official answer is yes, if no follow-up is necessary after grading. However, you don't know any if any follow-up is necessary until you're done with the grading, so it advised for you to stay. But if you're very confident that nothing else will be needed, then yes, the system can dismiss the patient. How many initials do you need? Well, it depends. And honestly, if you look at the form, you will see very clearly where it is you need it. That you need one for accept acceptance, two for any notes with modifications, and three for patient form grading. When is the endo section? Go to your REBS website now and you can see exactly which three hours are allocated to you. These are the only three hours that you will have. If I got provisional acceptance, can I start at 8 a.m. sharp? Yes, that's the beauty of provisional acceptance. So this is assuming that the medical history is done and initialed by a floor examiner, the clinical exam is completed by a floor examiner, and the operative worksheet is initialed by a floor examiner. When do I take the CTP? Well, I hope you all have done this by now because it's too late for our reps. Uh, if you haven't, for whatever reason, just get in contact with reps, see what they can do for you, but the official deadline has passed for this cycle. Can you change your endo time? No. Go on the reps website, see your endo time. Those are the only three hours you have for the whole weekend, unless you fail and have to retake on Monday. What identification do I need to provide at the exam? You need two valid non-expired forms of ID. This were, these were, were went over in the very first video. The first one is a driver's license, passport, military ID, alien registration card, government ID, employee ID, or school ID with an expiration date, which ours unfortunately does not have. Secondary is a social security bank card, ATM card, or a library card. This is just a picture of a class three. If you, if this is what you want to do, this is the shape you need. And some more uh, views for you to take a look at. The importance here is just going over the terms that you see. Gingival wall, axial wall, lingual wall, and sizal wall. So these are the areas that you would request modifications on. Class two, same thing. It's just most important for you to know the exact location that you're requesting the modification. If you write the wrong thing and you extend, put an extension in the wrong place, you will be docked or you may fail depending on where you are within the criteria. So be sure to know the terminology. Pulpal floor is above the pulp. Gingival floor is above the gingiva in the proximal box. Proximal walls are the extensions of your box. The regular distal wall if, or mesial wall is up in the cavo surface and the axial wall is kind of the wall of the box. Here's another more terminology just for your class two that you should be aware of. Please use exactly these words. So you're either an occlusal wall or a proximal wall or some, some form of floor. And that is it. Good luck. Let's do it, guys.